Yep. Yeah, we'll hear you now. Cool. Hey, guys. Uh, super pumped for the, the Zen FT launch um, and, and just being in the community. Um, I, I just had a quick question uh, for Jack. Um, I mean, what do, you, what do you anticipate happening here, like, just as far as, like, with open sea, um, I mean, with with when we're going to be flooding um, kind of the gates with with these different NFTs, um, what do you what do you see happening? Like, because we're I, I mean, in my mind, it's like we're about to you're about to break open sea, which is going to be like it's going to be cool to see. Well, <clears throat> I know it would be cool to see open sea being broken, but I think if anything, it's going to be Ethereum that's going to get broken, not the open sea. Uh, and and do you think that's just because of the the gas uh yeah potentially i mean the the way that uh, nfts are done they require uh, a bulk mint which actually will fill in the block up to 80 percent and those type of transactions are hard to validate so that basically means that everybody else will have to take a back seat because it's only 20 20 to 15 percent of block space available for transactions for everything else like including ethereum transfers that's going to be jammed up by this immediate uh, bulk mint that's going to happen because to mint an nft you have to bulk mint which means huge amount of gas needs to be spent on validation for those transactions which will um, drive everything else to be very very slow Well, and, and so then, yeah, I mean, so that, that means it's going to be pretty much clogged for a, a few days, potentially. Uh, potentially a few days or maybe not. I mean, it really depends on the situation with Zen market price. Like if Zen rallies, all of these NFTs become unaffordably expensive which will slow down the gas consumption, actually. Well. And that's a good thing, because we want, we, we ultimately we do not care about gas being burned, even though it's a nice vanity metric, and it's good for Ethereum to be, be deflationary because it keeps everything, everything valued nicely. But the, the truth is we really care mostly about Zen being burned and Zen being used to convert from ERC-20 to ERC-721. So really moving from one type of product to the next. So the first product is the ERC-20, which is widely available. It's really inexpensive right now. It's, I believe, uh, 505, 506, somewhere in there, which means that the Zunicorns NFTs are worth close to $60,000. If Zen doubles from here, that's $120,000 per NFT. Now, that would be the really expensive for people to actually to, to pull the trigger on, which means that the, the sort of reaction to get into these NFTs quick will be um, attenuated by the fact that you need to buy Zen that's very expensive. And a lot of people will not be able to afford it. So... Yeah, I, I think it's interesting, too, because I, I was just thinking about the concept of, you know, let's say if I were to mint a couple NFTs and sell them, I mean, with, with you know, Zen still kind of in its, like, price phase, like, still, still like, the price isn't necessarily real right now. It's still still new. With price appreciation of the, of the coin, yeah, I mean, if I sell an NFT early, I mean, I could potentially be missing out um, in the future. But I guess, yeah, I guess that's part of the game. Yeah, I mean, the, the other thing I wanted to point out that Zen's market cap reached all-time high to 17 million from a few weeks ago when it was five, sitting at around five. Now, that market cap is microscopic compared to the rest of the projects. The market cap that we could see is 100 to 200 million dollars and that would be an average size of a small project and if the, if this project gets huge this market cap would actually move to 500 500 million maybe a billion who knows right and what that means for the price is 10x 20x 30x and i'm speculating just looking at all the data available but we we have seen crypto projects being very 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 nicely valued 
uh, and and we're 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 and they don't do anything. They don't do yeah, exactly. They don't do anything and most <laughs> of the coins are held by the founder like 90% plus. Here all, all of the coins are held by the community, which what makes it so great. It's a true market cap. Um so we got a question from uh I am AI uh, about the um buy and burn. Is that a, a smart contract or is it going to be manually done? Is that the royalty question? Yeah, yeah. So at the moment, we don't have any means to do it automatically because it has to land into a wallet and from that wallet, it has to be transferred to uh, to Uniswap to be bought back and, and burned. Now, we could actually make a contract that's that's doing it automatically, but someone has to trigger the transaction and every transaction requires gas. And right now, there's no obvious ways how to do it automatically but if it was done automatically and if OpenSea could specify a contract address where where that uh, portion of the royalties land goes to Uniswap by itself by itself and then burns it with the proof of burn protocol as part of Zen contract that would be ideal because that would be the most organic way to do it from from the trade on OpenSea all the way to Uniswap all the way to the burn all with a sequence of transactions that nobody's touching. But wouldn't you, would there need to be someone, but couldn't just anyone call that? Uh, technically, yes. But it has to be okay. someone. Yeah. Like like generally when, when contracts... Kind of like a, the flush address. Um, yeah, but, the, but it, it the flush address, and I know what you're talking about, <laughs> yeah, the flush address from Hex. Yeah, that's the address that actually was. Uh, it 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 would it would be triggered by a user, right? So it has to be a user that yeah. triggers it. But if if we can figure out a way to somehow trigger it, and usually it's done with the contract callbacks, but there's no callbacks from OpenSea. Like it can't actually do any sort of uh, you know chain connection. Uh, it can just send sure. the money somewhere, and then that money has to end up. Um, into a some sort of other smart contract that but 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 even if it ends up in a smart contract elsewhere it still needs to be triggered yeah got you um all right let's see if we got anybody else to see uh coin pump that's a good name yes unmute yourself there you go You there? Hey, what's up, Trevon? Big fan here. Love your path. What's up? Uh, Jack, also Appreciate a big it. fan of the technology. It's a two-part question. So I'm curious why the amounts of coins you get on Binance Smart Chain are vastly different from Ethereum. And the second part is, is there a, a cross-chain bridge that's planned? So uh, the last question, cross-chain bridge is not planned because it already exists. There's a Stargate that connects all the chains and it's just a matter of liquidity. When liquidity rises, the trans-chain swaps will be available. Uh, it's just there isn't enough liquidity on Binance, for example. It's only like $20,000. <clears> um, what was the first question? Uh, how come the amount of coins that you get on Binance are vastly different. Gas is cheaper. Because I got enough to buy a Zunicorn, but only on Binance Smart Chain. So it sounds like I'm probably yeah, not going to get Yeah, it. it's because you didn't, you didn't spend any gas. Gotcha. So in the future, would I be able to, or you said right now it's available through Stargate. Would I be able to bridge my coins and buy a Zunicorn? Is that possible? Yeah, but your if you look at the Binance BZEN, look at its value, it's like 20 times cheaper. So you can't swap one to one. You will always have to swap at the ratio. So you said Binance is next for ZMTs, right? That's right. Are, are the 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 Zunicorn the same? It's like 10 10 billion or it's going to be higher? It's definitely going to be higher. Um, okay. I mean, ultimately, we settle in dollars. And right now, the Zunicorn cost 
is about sixty thousand, right? Okay. <clears throat> so if sixty thousand dollars buys you hundred billion on Binance, hundred billion Zen, then hundred billion would be the the number to follow. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, let's see who else we got. Yeah, because we don't want uh, cheap uh, unicorns everywhere. Yeah, man, we don't want cheap stuff, man. Yeah, we'll, we'll want it to be. Okay, that's cool. Value. That's yeah, cool. Yeah. I was just get, I was getting my hopes up. <laughs> I don't want to get my hopes up, but thank you for answering. Yeah, I mean, like, um, I mean, on on Polygon right. and uh, OKX, you could have had a trillion Zen, but doesn't mean it's valued anything. Like on OKX, uh, it until recently, and they raised prices by thirty times actually for Zen. But until recently, you were able to spend five cents and mint 128 wallets. And that's just five cents. Now, obviously, it's cheaper and obviously their inflation is much higher. So anywhere we will see higher inflation, the value of Zen is cheaper. Yeah. Um, some of you guys, man, I appreciate the questions, but a lot of you guys should, should humbly, I'm humbly say this. I'm going to try to humbly say this. Should go watch my videos before you, because a lot of stuff is like uh, basic stuff. Yeah, you guys get, no, don't, uh, get, don't, get don't don't say you watching my videos and you asking. Get some uh, get some Zen education. Like get some Zen education from Trail. Yeah, go watch Zen Su and and Trail One too. Um, yeah, watch. But if you want a full breakdown like the math and stuff, watch Zen Su. Yeah, if you want the guy with the Swedish accent, you go watch Zen Su. If you want, if you want uh, green stuff everywhere. Uh, <laughs> watch hey, we love green, man. <laughs> Don't you love green? Yeah, green is the best color. I, I like green. Um, let's see. I don't I'm not seeing anything on YouTube. Let's go back to Twitter Spaces. Bro, no. Hey Jack. See, I got some control over the YouTube. Comments. Hey Jack, what do you what do you think about Avalanche still? I mean, I still don't see uh too many too many users on there. Do you do you think the value of Avalanche is uh higher than Binance? In ter- in terms of the blockchain functionality or in, in terms or, of the price of Zen. I think Binance is going to be better just because they they have the Asian market cornered and they have even more uh, NFTs traded than um, than Ethereum. So, because Binance gives you this, gives you this, um, it's almost like a test net. The barrier to entry is so low for gas. A lot of people can launch all kind of cool games. So, I think Binance is probably much better than Avalanche, just because so many users are actually playing with the with with the BNB right there. They actually have true products. Like Avalanche, in my mind, is still mostly a research project. All right. Let's see. We got... Let me check YouTube real quick. Um, you, you, know what, you know what I'm seeing through on? I, I'm not seeing any fudders today. No, that's that's very interesting. Yeah, that's the only thing you can fud is the inflation. I mean, even... I would even... You know, say the limited as far as you know. I got a question. Somebody asked a question about you said the burn will never stop. Can you uh, go into that? The burn will never stop, which means why won't it ever stop? Because that's the that's the yang. We want the yang to be as large as the yin, and the and the yin is the production of Zen. So Zen is a right. building block for the rest of the projects. And the rest of the ecosystem that we're going to be building, we're going to be building out an amazing ecosystem. My team, obviously, plus uh, twenty to thirty other teams, are building this year or this coming year, and all of them will be using the proof of burn protocol. And proof of burn protocol, obviously, was not an afterthought because it existed from uh, day one within the Zen contract. So we specifically designed it to be burned. Wow. Okay, that's that's an interesting perspective. Yeah, I mean, it's, I'm it's, trying to see if there's any other questions on here. Yeah, it's true. I mean, some people thought like, wait a second, did did he or me me specifically, Jack, 
came up with the burn because we got scared of inflation. That is that is not the case. We knew that deflation is going to be huge for for the eight years, eight year period. And we also knew that uh, if we can have people consume this inflation with the burn, we need to have a burn mechanism right inside the contract that people can interface with. Okay, so, I mean, I, I already know what the next thing is as far as the staking NFTs, but do you want to talk about that? Since everybody's going to be asking, the, que- the next question I'm seeing the most is what's next after his NFTs? So uh, two things, actually. It's going to be a stakeable uh, ZNFT, which is basically in the sense that when you stake Zen right now, it's connected to your wallet, but we will issue an NFT so that you can sell your stakes. Nice. So that's that's a different NFT then? Completely different, yeah. I mean, okay. it, it will still use the same uh, framework and the same proof of burn and the same staking function. And by the way, uh, uh, staking function burns Zen until you mint it again when the stake is matured. But with a Zen NFT, it becomes portable, it becomes encapsulated, uh, outside of your wallet in in a token that you can now trade, which will make the total volume of trading to be even bigger than what we're seeing on ERC twenty right now. So you're so the staking NFTs won't be the mints; it'll be the staking. It'll be the staked Zen NFTs, or both. Well, you don't need the mint because we have the collector NFT to do the minting and then the staking is just the other side of it. Okay, let me ask you like this then. So will I be able, are we talking about two different things? So the one thing I heard about was, say I have a common NFT. I can stake that NFT, right? and then borrow from it yeah that's that's something that we haven't designed yet but that that's a little bit different than... so what's first I... so it is two different things i'm talking about. yeah yeah two different things so the, okay, the first one true. is going to be the regular uh, uh nft that you will mint by staking zen okay got you the borrowing part comes later because it requires different contract entirely uh to borrow against the assets uh, which are NFTs that you'll be having or as NFTs. Got you. So the staking NFTs will, are next. Yeah, for sure. Got you. Um, so I do have one. I do have one FUD from our favorite FUDder. It says, let's say in three years, emissions drop by 30% as state, stated in the white paper, but mints increase by 500%. You end up with plenty more inflation, correct? more inflation than the first year. That's a possibility. You get that? Yeah, that's a possibility. Okay. Can, can, can happen. Okay, so let me read it again. Let's say in three years, emissions drop 30 cents in the white paper. But, but you know what? In in three years, we're going to be in the bull market cycle where gas is going to be 200 to 300 guay. And Ethereum is going to be maybe 10,000. So yeah, we're, we're depending on the bull market. The bull market is what's going to take sin. If a bull market doesn't come, then I mean, we're, we're screwed even anyway, right? Yeah, if the bull market isn't coming, I mean, the, the only force that's reducing inflation are all of the new projects that are burning in. Okay. Um, let's see. Give me a second to read. Are there going to be any gaming use cases? Uh, so before we get into that, I want to mention that we will we like we're actually have in the works in the concept stage right now more of the we're we're playing playing with the economic formulas. We're gonna have another ARC twenty T token that's limited to hundred million, and that token will uh, be issued to the burners of Zen. And it will have the, what we call uh, reflection. Though reflection, I really don't like using this word because reflection yeah. is um, often uh, used for scam projects. But it is a solid idea. What will happen is, is that the new token will be paying dividends or yield to the holders 
by the activity of the Zen burn and mm-hmm. stake and staking. So that new token becomes a bond where kind of like a bond. If you have a lot of Zen, but you actually want to get something that's scarce and even more valuable and has a cap, that would be the one. So you mean not more token, man? You yeah. Just use more token, man. It's going to be our tokens uh, only on Ethereum very, very soon. Okay, I'm going to I'm gonna have to listen to you say it a couple more times. Um, <laughs> wrap my head around it. So stake, so people, are you saying people that burn or people that have, that burn for the NFTs? All right. So the new token, right? We're talking about the new token. Right. Okay. So this is how it's going to work. It's going to be 100 million or so a cap. We haven't decided uh, on the solid number, but there will be a cap. It's going to be five years only when it comes to emissions. So every month there will be an emission of a new token that the Zen burners will be competing for. So whoever burns the most Zen will get the bigger share of the new token. So you're converting, mm. converting the burn of your Zen into a possibility to mint a new token after a 30-day period. And every month, the amount of tokens that are issued will be less, less, and less. So it will be deflationary from the get-go. And the conversion of this Zen that's getting going to get burned, you you will essentially have to compete with everyone else who is trying to 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 mint those new tokens for themselves. And obviously, it's going to be on chain, immutable, no admin keys, and uh, and obviously the founding team will not have any sort of pre-allocation. So very very similar to Zen, except severe cap, not inflationary, or maybe just somewhat inflationary in the beginning. And there will be a competition of people getting in. So like, for example, if you get in with 10 billion Zen and I get in with five and we're only two players, you get two thirds, I get one third at the end of the 30 day period. Now, if somebody else comes in with 20 billion, now all of a sudden they're going to get the 50% of it because you're getting in with uh, 10 billion, I get with five, they get with 20, so it's 20, 10 and five. Um, he gets the biggest chunk, but the competition for burn, obviously burns and gives it more value and issues this new token that will get the yield from all of the people that are participating within the contract. So the yield is going to pay you if you hold it. If you sell it, obviously you're selling the yield too. So it's basically, so the new token, it will be reflect token. Yeah, yeah, it's a reflection token, but it's ref- it will reflect on the all of the action of burn. A so, fairly distributed reflect token. Exactly. Yeah, that's good, no, man. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Um, and that so token a brand, will not a brand new burn. This is this don't have anything to do with NFTs. Yeah, yeah, completely NFT free. No, I mean we could actually come up with NFTs on top of the new token too. That will yeah. they will also burn stuff, but. Uh, but the third or fourth project is going to be uh, this new ERC-20 token that pays you yield and is capped. Yeah, man. I, I like I like what you're doing because being that you started everything off so fair, you can kind of go like wherever. It's, it's, I can't really explain it, but maybe you get what I'm saying. The fairness of the Zen launch means that you can just keep on... You can keep making new tokens... Well, it needs fair it, it, because the first one was fair. Well, of, of course, and <clears throat> it's not just going to be the new tokens. Each new project will have its own game mechanics in it, which will make it a very, very interesting. And of course, all of the new projects will be using proof of burn for Zen. So Zen will be even more deflationary. The supply will be continuously reduced, and people who burn get to be rewarded by this new Bitcoin-like token that will pay you yield. Through reflection. That's what's up. Uh, it kind of reminds me of another. Um, it kind of reminds me of another Mexican um, project that launched not too long ago, but I ain't gonna go there. All right, let's see. Um, big smile, Javon. It's funny. Yeah, I'm smiling, man, because it's kind of hilarious how it's all unfolding. It's like I kind of feel like the supply is gonna go the other direction, and then the inflation 
it's just it's just funny how Trayvon it was personally. interesting what you were saying just about like um you know how things can he can kind of go wherever he wants because you know he kind of built the the foundation of it being fair it's kind of like uh like Zenzu and uh, Jim Rack got on the stream the other day and Zenzu had, like had some Legos and he was just talking about like how many different possibilities that can be built on top of uh, just the foundation of, of one Lego um, and then just on different on top of different Legos. So that's just kind of what it reminded me of when it comes to like the brain. Yeah, uh, Zen is technically a Lego, Lego piece or Lego pieces that uh, people uh, should be able to play with. Hell yeah. Okay. Let's see. Uh, Shahan. Welcome. Unmute yourself. Hey, can you hear me? Okay, yep. great. Uh, first of all, Jack, thanks for hosting the spaces. Um, I just want to give kudos to the team. It's just like um, I'm part of Hex and Pulse Chain community as well. And the fact that you're delivering so much software this quickly just kudos to the team. I think that says a lot um, for how things are progressing. Quick question. Um, me and a group of others were looking actually to build around Zen for a particular project. And uh, we had, you know, uh, a burn component as part of it. So I basically want to know if there was, I don't know if there was office hours or something with some group within your team or other developers you're working with that we can kind of bounce some ideas off of, uh, different projects we want to put together. Yeah, uh, yes, of course. So we have a Telegram group um, specifically aiming at the third-party developers. You should join it because that's where the whole build-out is happening. Different projects and all of the developers are talking to each other. So you should join that group. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, will there be any utility for the MTs after they mint? Uh, will there be any utilities for the NFTs after they're minted? Yeah. Um, but I guess I guess the staking. I guess the answer to that. Yeah, staking and borrowing. Um. All right, let's take one more from. What time is we got? What fifteen more minutes? Actually, I I have I have actually a lot of time still available right. to me, so so we can go forever. I mean, not forever, forever, but uh, it doesn't need to be exactly an hour. Well, now is forever, isn't it? Now is forever, yeah. I'm pull, I'm pull a, a U by saying that one. Um, can Jack give examples of how other products can build on Zen? Maybe you can stimulate the people. Well, I think if Zen grows to a community that's really, really large, tens of millions of people that hold Zen, it just makes sense to build projects with Zen just because you get uh, your addressable market is going to be huge. And obviously, everybody wants to Zen to be burned. So building a proof of burn protocol um, that's new, that burns Zen is a good idea and uh, definitely will be popular. So that's, that's the way to do it. I mean, like... You wouldn't want to do it with with the community that's small, but if if it grow large, then it just means that you will immediately um, get a lot of users right away. Uh, let's add bonds. Bonds. Let's see. I think they disappeared. Um, it looks like Shahan has his hand. Yeah. Up. Hey, Shahan. Um, yeah, I had another question. It seems like, um, how Zen is like rolling out on a bunch of different chains. Um, you're in a very unique position in that you can gain a lot of like analytics and insights into these chains because you're deploying the same code on different chains and, uh, kind of being at the center of that seems like it's a pretty interesting thing to explore. And I would imagine that you could gain different insights to figure out, you know, what's good on this chain or this chain or what kind of problems do we see and kind of like taking all of that info to then do something as a kind of layer on top or launch your own chain with all of the findings that you get from that. That's something I was thinking about, you know, somebody, somebody that's technically minded like yourself, 
would look at something like that and see how everything performs and take the good from that into building something new. Is that, has that some, been something on the mind of the team? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's actually is on the mind of the team. I think the, if, if, if we don't fuck up, so to speak, then it only makes sense to have some sort of a chain, uh, uh, at the end when when there's a lot of projects that's been built everything is uh, working smoothly then the best projects could migrate to the new chain could use zen as a gas token for example so that's definitely a possibility and obviously the gas uh use use case for zen gives it more utility because you will end up burning burning that gas too so so burn of Zen on the new chain is an is an awesome idea, and I think uh, it just it it. But it would make sense to do it if there's actually a lot of projects in the community that's uh, demanding something that's uh, better than Ethereum. All right, let's try and get let's give Barnes another chance. Was that was that for me, Bronner? Oh, what's up? Uh, how's it going? Um, just want to say hi, Trevon. I've been following you for a few years. Um, Jack, awesome project. I've come from another three-letter crypto project. Um, but yeah, my question was also uh, around this, this uh, multiple chains, and um, you know, I think it's amazing that you're you 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 kind of casting the net across these different chains. And, and yeah, I was also a bit like what Shahan was saying. I was kind of interested in what your observations have been around these different chains. I know you, you seem to suggest there was a good success on the launch on Phantom. Uh, I personally had never heard of that, that chain before, but you know, a lot of people, there's obviously all these chains out there and obviously Ethereum is the premium premier chain of lots of projects and people using it. But do you think there's a possibility that these other chains might start to emerge as as potential, you know, um, high performance chains that could do well in the future? Well, we're we're definitely want them to be successful uh, because we're there and uh, we 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 did bring a lot of users to those chains. Uh, and what we saw actually that the really only true uh, chains that that were ready for us was was uh, Ethereum, Binance, and Polygon. Everyone else really suffered uh, from uh, chain getting in on the on on their chains. Like for example, uh, Doge Chain uh, was an interesting experiment. They they had to ban bulk minting because uh, Zen was filling up everything that they have all of their infrastructure was uh, uh heavily 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 taxed and so w- what we do notice is that 70 percent uh, of the chains we see uh we're not really ready for uh for zen that's very interesting thank you all right let's uh let's get josh not eat Hi there. I had a question real quick for the end for the uh, forgettable claimers. The, do the tokens go to burn or are they just non-existent? They don't ever get produced, so there's there's nothing to burn. Okay, thank you. Yep. Go ahead, Josh. Hey, um, I was just curious. Yo, you really got that ENS name? <laughs> no, I haven't gotten it. I, I really, uh, I've been looking at it though. Man. I haven't saved. <laughs> Um, but I mean, I don't really have uh, an extensive knowledge in, um, MEV, but I was curious to know if that would be possible, like any sort of front running on the, the launch, if that would be any concern or if that's even a possibility. That's not really a concern. I haven't seen a lot of MEV action, uh, on, uh, ERC 721, uh, or NFT space. Uh, they're mostly trying to to, to scalp uh, some value from uh, from tokens that are traded on Uniswap versus you know other pools and things like that. So yeah, I, I don't really see that as an issue. And also uh, going back to what I said earlier, I feel like Zen is gonna act as a buffer 
to that sort of uh, action. So in other words, if Zen rally is hard tomorrow, then it will uh, act as a buffer for people to to getting in and you know get killed just because um, it will naturally make uh, Zen NFTs expensive because the Zen's value is connected to NFTs. All right, let's get Moon Launch. What's up? Trevon? What's up? What's up? <laughs> um, so the other three-letter crypto that cannot be named has a 3.69% inflation rate. When do we see zen breaching that threshold and going beneath that uh beneath what exactly the inflation rate correct so uh i think you're talking about hacks uh what's interesting about hacks is that hacks inflation is pegged to the total supply and so it will always be printing a lot of hacks where Zen will slowly uh, cause the inflation to go down. So after four years, it's half, you know, would be half time or half life of Zen, and then more so from afterwards. And so Zen settles at two percent stakeable yield, and right now we're only seeing about ten percent of people staking. So which means that the yield is potentially going to be zero point two percent if the total number of stakers is continue to be at 10%. If it's more, it's still going to be uh, uh, less than uh, HEX because HEX obviously cannot change the inflation is 3.69, where with Zen, the inflation becomes uh, very, very low and very, very variable based on the stakers because Zen's emissions will be gone in eight years, right? So uh, uh, that actually means that... Um, the, cur- the inflation curves between those two projects will uh, will diverge. Okay. One other question. Since you're sort of using the Zodiac calendar and the burns are happening like at, at the calendar year junction point, are, are you going to consider also one-off burn events like Solstice or Equinox? We're not really following the Zodiac calendar. Well, you are for, I guess, just for the NFT. It's like the Chinese calendar, isn't it? Oh, the Chinese. Yeah. Okay, that's right. Yeah, but it has nothing to do with burn, though. That's that's just uh, naming naming conventions. Yeah, but they're limited supplies, so they sort of burn around the calendar year. No, I wouldn't uh, say so. Like because when we when we launch tomorrow and the limited uh, as NFTs will be available every day so that means every day burn it's it has nothing to do with any sort of particular time of burn uh, anytime people mint as nft the burn will occur all right somebody keeps asking this question in, in the youtube chat why would someone burn 10 billion in for 3.5 billion could be a massive massive loss down the road uh that's a good question and sometimes i ask the same question myself uh, I I plan to do it. Right. I plan to get I plan to get this unicorn, and uh, I have other people tell me that they plan to do it, and we see uh, everybody on chain priming to to do exactly that. So why why are we all doing it? Well, we're all doing it because the rarity of the Zen Zen NFT is obviously something that you cannot get again. So it's compared. Compared to Zen, that's has inflation. Zen NFTs don't really have inflation, right? So people want to lock in their Zen into uh, an inflationless product, and I'm talking about Apex specifically. Like Apex is re- really only ten thousand Zen NFTs, only ten thousand. So why would anybody w- would not want to get something that cannot be ever cre- be created again? So kind of makes sense to me because uh, and, and of course I mean like if you think about it if 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 the other projects that going to get launched continue to burn Zen and Zen gets even more value 
and the market cap goes from 15 million to 500 million, maybe a billion, that will affect the limited issues NFTs to a greater degree. Like for example, Zen's moving 5x could cause NFTs to move 10x or maybe 20x just because NFTs are not getting produced, they're not getting minted, and Zen is getting minted. And so, but they do move together based on the community participation. So whether you're minting Zen NFT or not, if you have future mints or if you hold Zen in your wallet, you get the benefit anyway. So that's that's the best part. Nice. Um, let's see. Hey, quick question. Um, any future airdrops planned? Well, we don't mint anything, so we can't airdrop anything. Okay. Yeah, airdrops are for people who uh, mint a quadrillion of crap tokens and then they airdrop them everywhere. So, but that's not what we do. Uh, <laughs> let's see who else we got. I keep thinking of that song Kyle. Burning Down the House by the Talking Heads. I feel like that would be a fun song to play. Dial Zerg. Dial Zerg. What's up? Unmute yourself. Hey, how are you doing? Trevon, greatly appreciate the videos. Uh, Jack, no problem, I man. greatly appreciate the protocol. Um, I'm just wondering, question about the uh, NFTs and the NFTs, the staking NFTs. Um, will the staking NFTs have the same tiers? Like, will there be Zunicorn uh, staking NFTs like there are with the NFTs? I think we're going to make it simple. We, we're really going to release a generic staking nft so and i guess what i what what you mean to ask is when you stake zen will there be categories of the nfts given to you based on certain criteria i think we're going to make it simple going to make one type because it's really a utility nft it's not collectible it's just something that's used as a utility to be able to sell your stakes before they become mature so for that, it doesn't need to be anything fancy like what we're doing with uh, as NFTs today. Okay, thank you. So there won't be any burning going on with those NFTs. Not, not in, not in the same way you think of as NFTs to, that uh, we have a white paper out for. It's just going to be utility where your your stake is encapsulated into a new NFT that can be traded. That's it. Thank you. I appreciate that. Now, I, I do want to say that uh, anytime you stake Zen, it gets burned for the duration of the stake. So it's kind of like a burn, but not really because you can mint it back. So, But, but it still reduces the supply and makes it unavailable for trading, which is positive for um, the value of Zen because there's it's a, what, what doesn't exist impossible to sell. Absolutely. Thank you for that. All right, we got. I got a few more minutes. What up, Alex? Let's try it again. Nope, it's not working for Alex. We'll try later. King's Way, what up? You think it's because I got too many people on the stage? Might be, huh? No, I think. Sometimes Twitter space is a little glitchy. Um, let's try it again. All right, I'm gonna try and remove some of these people and see if that happens, if that works. That is what it was. Same people. I can uh, I can talk now. What's up? Awesome. No, great to be here. Been in the crypto space for a while nft space for almost two years excited about zen um i wanted to look, talk a little bit about market cap i think we're sitting around what is it 10 million um 
when do you see or how do you see, you know, that increase uh, over the next year or so? I, I heard you talking, I think, on your own YouTube channel about market cap uh, getting into somewhere in the Shiba Inu range. Um, when do you think that will take place? Uh, tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> you really? Come on, man. Give a serious answer, Jack. <laughs> There's no serious answer to that because it's it's really connected to the success of uh, all of the new projects. So if we do well with NFTs, the market cap should, you know, 10x itself easily, right? So even now, pre-launch, we have a front run on Zen being purchased and the market cap has tripled. So, yeah, I mean, tomorrow we're going to see maybe a different value entirely. Who knows? And if it flops, which I hope it doesn't, we're not going to see anything. We're going to see the, mar- the market cap shrink. But I hope uh, we'll do well. Awesome. And, and just a follow-up question. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Art Gobblers and, and the mathematics behind that project, but I, I feel a similarity bet- between you guys, uh, Zen and Art Gobblers, in the fact that I think in the beginning, people didn't really understand or comprehend the math where it's like the longer you hold the better it is and at the beginning it's very inflationary but over time it's deflationary can you can you just go over that high level yeah i mean but it's been true for every crypto bitcoin number one super inflationary the first year nobody knows what it is no market adoption uh literally printing it out of thin air with electricity same thing Exactly the same thing. It's like this for every project in the market, unless it's a scam project. Then it's a little different. So I would say uh, uh, best to get into a project when it's uh, very, very inflationary, just only because the inflation is required to onboard the new users. Thank you very much. Uh, Good luck in, in tomorrow, and I wish you all the best. Thank you. Fingers crossed. All right, let me knock out some of these quick ones. Can the ZNFT sell out tomorrow? No, because there isn't enough Zen. Uh, will VMUs in ZNFTs bleed out if not claimed on a day like regular mints? Yes, they'll bleed out the same. From my knowledge, Jack, please correct me if I'm wrong here. Um, this is about... All right, let's take somebody else. When will Jack announce the reflection token? Probably a long time from now. Uh, it's not going to be too long we will probably release a white paper maybe March. That's okay. something. I'll take that. But uh, uh, I'll, I'll probably release the highlights kind of like a pre, pre-light pre paper uh, even earlier. So I, I just want to make sure NFTs are success. That's my 150% focus right now. The other 10% or 20% is in my mind, is in the new projects. And um, so, yeah, but it, it's it's coming. It's coming. All right, go ahead. King's away. My bad, bro. It's still connecting. There you go. Mute yourself. Yo, what's up, guys? Um, so Jack, I was I was wondering, um, in the first three months, the the ten zoning coins get sold out, right? Um, would you add more zoning coins, or would you just leave it as is? No, I can't add anything because the contract's immutable. So once it launches, launched, the the number stays the same always. That's what makes it fair. Okay, okay. So um, all right then. Thanks. Um, I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Trevon. Yeah, so. What so I, I, Go ahead. I want to mention uh, a few things about uh, tomorrow. So we're likely going to deploy the ZNFT contract today, tonight. However, it will not be functional, even though there will be a mint button and you can actually press mint and you can look at it. And you can even attempt to mint one. But what will happen is the block ID is set for tomorrow, 2 p.m. 
specific, which means that if the block height has not reached the proper value, your transaction will be reverted. You will lose a little bit of gas, but you will not get your NFT. As soon as the block height moves above the dimensioned uh, block ID, I guess, and the block ID is one, six, three, two zeros and five, two, eight. So once we reach block height on Ethereum, the contract will unlock itself and become functional. All right, let's take. Uh... Uh, um, Trayvon, um, will you be streaming tomorrow? I'm going to stream, you mean during the, the, the launch? Yeah, yeah. That'd be like five. I'll try. I'll try. Well, he'll be he'll be busy pressing the Yeah, I'll be pretty. Uh, I'm going to be uh, busy. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're, we're all going to be busy. <laughs> yeah. I'll try, though. Uh, you good, Jack? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. All right, let's take another one. Okay. Execute 007. Almost 300 100. people in the spaces. It's amazing. Say what? 300 people on Where spaces. 300? Nice. Yeah, it's uh, your followers and my followers because they um, they look at the Twitter and they see us uh, in the space. Let's see. Dark Impact. Hey man, right. hey man. A uh, couple, couple, couple questions. Um, you've mainly answered everything so far. I just want to say thank you for all like the insane work that's going on. Uh, really altruistic vision. I just want to get a couple more, like points on your reasonings and your whys. Uh, for this project, like you're already a very successful person. Um, regardless, you don't really need any more money. I mean, more money doesn't hurt or anything like that. But at the end of the day. At the end of the day, I really I guess I want to know what's your end game for all of this. What would you really see Zen uh, becoming at the end of everything? Um, and say like at the end of the eight years. I'm looking at it to be a building block of the new, uh, new free crypto world. That's uh, that's the plan. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Also, just one other quick one. Uh, where did the running mint total go from the portfolio page? Because I really missed that. Running mint. I'm gonna have to look. Yeah, there used to be a, a, a total at the top that would say like you're expected uh, coming from all the mints from all the addresses that you had tracking, uh, and I just I just love seeing that big number go up at the top, and it, it made me it gave me a lot of dopamine. But um, use in turbo. Oh yeah, yeah. I think we might we might have broke it, broke it, broken it because we've been pushing uh, new stuff in. Mm -hmm. But Zen Turbo is uh, the place to uh, to monitor your stuff. It's uh, it actually works better. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. I've been uh, playing around a few different sites, but just I don't know. I've just been kind of scared of people trying to take my my Zen. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, they they they're not gonna take your Zen if you just uh, all all they do is they read on chain data by looking at uh, the wallets that you give them to look at. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Well, that's all I really had. Thank you guys so much. Sure. Uh, let's see. Let's go with uh, Pulse Dream. Cool name. Post Dream, you're on the air. Jim Rat. Uh oh. I got you, Post. Uh. Hold up. Go ahead, uh, Pulse Dream. Hello. Um, so I heard the brief mention of the reflection token. Did you guys talk about it earlier in the AMA? I might have missed it when I went to the grocery store. If so, I won't ask a question about that. I'll go back to this later. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, so have you guys already covered the, the ideas behind the reflection token, or is that just a, a nebulous idea still with no real... No real bones yet. 
Uh, it has a it has a spine right now. We're just building building the ribs. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll wait for the white paper on that. Um, so to kind of expand on the uh, you know burning ten billion to only get back you know three to five. Uh, talking to Zen Zhu on the Telegram, I think he's misspoken a few times. He when I've asked him about the ten billion burn, he keeps referring back to it as no, you're storing it inside that NFT. And that I think that makes, that might just be a mis, misspeak or, you know, English second language problem, but storing 10 billion inside the NFT makes it sound like it's eventually redeemable. Whereas a burn is that 10 billion is gone, never coming back, but you will have the, you know, 120, 128 BMUs coming out in the future. Uh that that is that is true or it could be somewhat misleading i think what he meant to say is that when you spend zen it doesn't really matter i mean zen is going away like like let's say that if you were to make a purchase and not, let's say that somebody is taking your zen and giving you the nft uh, your zen is gone anyway but the nft is worth that much zen that you spent now when you interact with the blockchain, specifically what we build with the proof of burn, you're literally buying and minting the NFT for yourself by spending Zen. So the Zen spend is lo- is written in into a property of this NFT, which will make this NFT valuable, at least at the value that you have spent, or even greater, just because it's limited, limited in its. Uh, uh, total issuance. So 10,000 Apex is limited only to 10,000. So when you end up spending your Zen to buy it, you're kind of kind of loading it into his NFT. You will not be able to retrieve it, but the value is still there just because you. everybody knows on chain you have spent that much economic energy to produce that, uh, that token, NFT token. That's, that's fair. And that's just in the idea of value, not not in the idea, well, I guess then the whole, it's all ideal value, right? But not in the fact that you can then take that Zen and send it somewhere. It's just, hey, someone put 10 billion into this, and it's just whether you find value in that having 10 billion burnt Zen or not. Um, and then talking know, you, about, you, let, me, let me say it like this. If if I was to burn 10 billion Zen, I'm not going to sell it for less than I burned. Exactly. Right, <laughs> right. But that 10 billion is gone, right? Yeah, I, I understand gone. that. It, it's gone, but it's 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 uh, literally converted. It's, yeah, I, you convert right, your Zen yeah. to 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 an NFT. Got it. Um, but when that mint's so, done and it says yeah, yeah. So the, think of yeah. So that that's just the bonus. It's just the bonus that will uh, get you more Zen. That's in the future, but it has nothing to do with the Zen you burned. Perfect. And then talking about the NFT staking. So we're talking about something similar to HSIs, it sounds like, which I think is fantastic. Um, After you have redeemed that NFT, so after you've already minted everything available, will that still be available for staking or only the ones that still have a minting value, like uh, constantly printing can be staked? I think anything that has value can be staked. So even even if, uh, like, like let's let's say that, after 400 days, your NFT is redeemed. It still has the value of the money you spent for it, which is 10 billion Zen, technically. That should be able to be stakeable. And the value of the Zen NFT should be, you should be able to borrow against it. So it becomes your collateral and you can borrow against the collateral. So rather than selling the Zen NFT, you should be able to borrow against it. And that's useful when the Zen price rallies. You can then stake it, take 30% out, sell it for a stable coin, and lock in your gains. But then, of Fire. course, if it continues to, to rally, then, then you're screwed because <laughs> you, you will not have the, the money to, uh, to unlock your, um, your Zen NFT from the right. staking pool. Okay, that will be very interesting to watch because the idea of being able to take like an apex or a zunicorn a 10 billion burn and be able to stake that and draw money out against that burnt then when you've already redeemed you know the let's say 5 billion or 6 billion whatever it be at the end of those 400 days or however long you take your 
the amount that you earn. That will be that will be very interesting. Thank you. Be, uh, done. Yeah, yeah, it will be super, super fun to to be. All right. Um, what time is it? You good? Yeah, I'm good. I mean, okay. it's it's still uh, uh, 3 p.m. here, so. Yeah. Wh- why? What? What? Uh, let me ask you that. What made you choose Hawaii? COVID. Really? Got you. Where were you before Hawaii? California. Okay. Is do you like being that far behind? Or I guess yeah, uh, I guess that is behind. I I. Uh... <laughs> I like it because oh, yeah, I was I was wondering because when I, I I visited California for a little while and it was so weird being like behind, you know. No, my, my no, home. I'm 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 used I'm used to it. It's uh, it's actually pretty great. Yeah, I imagine it would be kind of cool. All right, let's get like two more. Uh, Tim. Yeah, I'm closer to Australia. I'm only three hours away from Australia. Yeah. The West Coast Tim, the you're West on the Coast. air. Hey, Trevon. Hey, Jack. Uh, so I, I noticed there's like little symbols in between uh, like the rare and limited categories. There's like the yin yang symbol for the rare. Um, I noticed in the limited series, there was like a rabbit. Is, like, do the symbols change depending on like how long you're minting for or what the VMU count is? The rabbit is for the Chinese uh, year 2023, and then the next year is going to be a dragon. Wow. Okay. And then uh, I just wanted to say, uh, I know Paul Buhite's nephew. I'm pretty good friends with him. Uh, you know Paul, right? Yeah, yeah. Paul uh, joined uh, Google about three days after I joined. So I, I set up his workstation so that he can <laughs> uh, invent Gmail. So, and then you plugged in the cord, right? Jack, were you just a janitor at Google <laughs> and you just playing a joke on us? Um, yeah, yeah, I was a janitor. I, I, I made sure everything is uh, clean and uh, working, and the lights are on. You were the. And, I'm uh, actually starting to believe you. That would actually be hilarious, man. I, I, I made sure that uh, toilet paper is, uh, you know, full, and uh, everybody have a nap, a napkin. You made set. sure all the the cords were plugged in. Yeah, all the cords plugged in. Yeah. Nice. yeah. You know, the first thing that happened to me at Google, uh, they they asked me to fix their um, internal company email server, and it was sitting on its side. You know, like you know, like a PC that's sitting on its side with open uh, open box. So right. it was so dark in there. So I had a, a lamp that's helping me to look into it, just to see if I can fix it, <clears throat> and that lamp actually fell into <laughs> fell into the mail server and it killed it so i i killed uh well not not only i brought google down many many times i uh, my my first uh, uh item of destruction was to to kill the the uh, the source repository for google because they didn't have any backups and i accidentally dropped a, uh, a lamp into into the into the server Drop that's away. amazing oh, wow. Okay, I well, still don't know. <laughs> I don't know whether or not you Yeah, uh, it, was, it was not on purpose. I, I just, just wanted to fix it. Got you. Well, thank um, you, Jack, Jack, very much. Hey, I got a couple questions. Can I chime in? Go ahead. Cool. Um, so if and when Paul Strain ever launches and Richard decides on uh, just deleting Zen out of the contracts or his chain, do you plan on still launching there? I I yeah, will not no go with... I will not go against uh, founders uh, rules. So if uh, if Richard hates Zen for whatever reason, I can't imagine why he would. Uh, but if he says that Zen is bad for Pulse Chain, then I'm not going to obviously make a stink about it because it's Richard's community, it's Richard's chain. If it ever launches, there's no reason for me to, to, to push my uh, agenda there. Cool, cool. And... Uh... Why are you doing all these amazing projects and not asking for funds? And why are you launching in a bear market? Well, the bear market is the best time to launch because you get the true crypto enthusiasts into your project and you build the backbone, the strongest uh, in a bear market. When, when it's a bull market, everybody buys everything and you just don't even know if you're successful or not because your thing is rallying even if it's a shit coin. So... Um, why am I doing all this? Uh, well, 
I just want to get into crypto. So here I am. I'm in crypto. You're doing it for the glory. Thanks. No, I, I don't think I'm doing it for the glory. Uh, I, I just, just want to see if it was possible. So it looks like it might be. Good one. Um, right, let's take one more. Right, raise your hand if you think you got the best question. Oh, somebody in the chat said, why haven't you launched on uh, Crow yet? Uh, I don't know. It's, it's, it's giving me some uh, EBGBs for some reason. I don't know exactly why. Yeah, Maybe. I mean, I got I got banned from their app a couple of years ago, like a year or so. Yeah, I, I usually don't, uh, I don't really like uh, Chain to be launched as an afterthought after a trading platform is launched. I mean, Binance is a different story. They've been around for a while, but... Um, yeah, I think a lot of those chains are used for marketing and not really true exchange of value. Um, so I, I would rather be in, a, in an organic uh, chain and something that actually has users. So I'm not even sure. I think I looked at Crow and like has like one transaction a second, mm. which is not, not that interesting. <laughs> All right, I'll take one more. Let's see. Uh... I'm gonna go with Crypto Profit. He's been he's been a subscriber for a while. Make it good, man. Go ahead, bro. Crypto Profit. What's up? Um, I have a I have a couple of questions, and one of my questions is: Let's say the owner of the NFT um, decide to sell his NFT on OpenSea. Will the NFT be pegged with the price of XN on the market? That's the first question. So thank you for that question. It will not necessarily be pegged, but likely it will follow it. Everything is based on the market itself. So whoever wants to uh, give value to anything, they, it will be completely open for, for that. So it's not, like, it's not like there's a secret sauce within the contract that somehow links the value. It's the, the market will figure it out. I think my feeling is the market will value Zen NFT is higher than Zen itself, just because they're limited. Okay, okay, okay. So by checking into the the chain, I'm seeing uh, approximately in the holders uh, like 18 people that has like uh, like 20k or something, 20 billion. Yeah, about about 20 billion and one with 15 billion and stuff like that. It doesn't look like there are a lot of people um, that gonna, yeah let's say buy the Zen unicorn, but I think that they will be buying the legendary or something like that because um, um, will the exchange be participating in this? Uh, no, the, the ex there's no exchanges when you mint because nothing exists until you mint it. So you have to come to the website, to the web app, burn your Zen, get it minted, and then... Uh, it will show up on OpenSea, and from there you can you'll start getting offers if the market wants to buy it from you. Okay, thanks. All right. Uh, when will when will be able to mine Zen with GPU? Uh, still, still debatable if we want to do that, just because uh, there seem to be easier, better, more accessible ways for people to to get into the Zen economy. And we talked about the new token, we talked about the at least two two new types of NFTs. So I feel like we need to get those things out and we need to support the builders and then eventually maybe we'll do approval work with uh, GPUs. But uh, it's kind of like a moonshot uh, thought right now. Uh, not necessarily anything that has a timeline. Uh, I watched you guys talk about your Zen minting strategies when it first launched. Are you guys implementing any specific strategy for minting Zen NFT? Are you Jack? Absolutely. What is your strategy? <laughs> what? Yeah. What is your strategy? Okay. So, so I want you guys to kind of understand that before you can burn Zen, you need to approve it, approve it in the contract to be uh, taken from your wallet. And that actually you will be able to do even before 
the 2 p.m. Pacific tomorrow. So everyone should do it. Everyone should have approval so that you don't actually end up needing to approve anything when the gas price is high. So they will reduce the load on the Ethereum. So pre-approve your your uh, Zenburn and it, sh- it definitely check the numbers too. Like the web app will say how much Zen exactly is pre-approved. So once you pre-approve, if you do it today when we when we deploy the contract, then tomorrow the strategy should be is to choose the Zen NFT you like. The approval will be there, and uh, I would say be very careful with Gui. If Gui jumps to a thousand, potentially it could. Then the bulk mint value of a thousand will end up costing you thirty thousand dollars in Ethereum just for gas, which is obviously undesirable. So this is something you need to watch out for and make sure your Gui is not. Uh, sets to a thousand when you execute the transaction. I mean, unless you want to spend another thirty thousand dollars on gas. I mean, some people may be able, may, may want to. Who knows, right? I, I wouldn't want to certainly. So I, I would be managing my way very, very specifically. So th- that's that's all of your strategy. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm only getting one. I'm getting one Zunicorn. I'll be happy. Nice. Um. If I can, if I can get uh, Ethereum to actually to mint it for me, because I may be, if I am like thirty seconds late and a bunch of transactions in the queue is paying higher gas, then it's gonna have to go to them. It's uh, that's just fair. So you think that you think it's gonna be a race like that to even get a Zunicorn? You don't think you'll be able to? You don't think you can just sit and wait for gas to come down and then get it? I would say, if you asked me that two days ago, I would say, yeah, we wait. But looking at the twenty-five to thirty million dollars in volume right now on coin market cap, that makes me feel like people are front running mm. uh, and loading on Zen to do something. So I think people are gonna go for the top tier, and the top tier is only one hundred. This is one hundred transactions, yeah. right? Only one hundred. Uh, I think there's enough DGens in the world to get one hundred. Hey, it's cool with me. I, I, I mean, I'm gonna try, but I, I, I wasn't expecting to, to hear you say because when we were talking that they would, it would take maybe all year to get a hundred Zenicorns. But there was, yeah. I mean, that's that's what I thought. That was because, a different time, yeah. Yeah, I mean, today I'm looking at. I mean, like, listen, thirty million dollars exchanged. Hey, if even if it's a fraction of the dollar amount, the market is definitely exuberant about it which means that people are going to be making crazy decisions in terms of getting it or trying to yeah. get the top tier but but hey i mean here here here's the facts the facts are the 10,000 zen nfts will have to burn 15 trillion zen there's no 15 trillion zen anywhere it doesn't exist which means that no matter what you may not get the top tier but you you can definitely get something because there isn't enough zen yeah so it it'll be you're thinking Zunicorns first, and then what's the next one? I can't remember the order. And then it'll slowly trickle down until like the rare will be last, the last ones to go. Uh, it, it it depends. I think the the lower tiers will go will go too for people for who don't have the ten billion and who are just getting into it, and they're like, okay, well, I can I can do five billion, maybe I can do two and a half, maybe one billion. One billion is kind of affordable. I mean, I would say, right? Yeah. So. So I to think a that, person in crypto, yeah, it's affordable, but it's still expensive in one, real one world billion, terms. One billion is six thousand bucks right now. Yeah, in real world terms, that's a lot of money. But in crypto, it's not really a lot. Yeah. It's funny how that works in crypto, right? Like the the dollar terms are the same, but it's like six thousand doesn't really seem like you spend six thousand dollars in physical reality on something crazy, but in crypto, it's like not that much. Well, I think it's because you know you can flip it for ten more. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. Any last words? Um. Just uh, thank you guys for asking all those questions, and thank you for participating. We're super excited. We're trying not to fuck up uh, with this release. <laughs>
So uh, doing the best we can. We're trying to be as transparent as we can. This is fair crypto, and I think we're going to take over the world. Nice. Thanks for coming on. I'll talk to you the next launch, man. All right, dude. Or the, uh, the reflection token, or what? Staking. Staking and reflection definitely coming up. All right, man. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody, for coming in. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube. Go buy some more tokens. Hey, sell your